ridiculous. A wagon diesel was ridiculous. shift into third and my head's like ah! <laughs> this thing is a madness it's just the torque so low down in the rev it's like 1500 2000 rpm this thing is spalling and absolutely throwing you down the road getting a little wiggle from the rear end this is a very capable wagon this okay so we start off today's video Although this is a very unassuming vehicle, a lot of people watching this will know full well what it's capable of. So, the gearbox into sport, so tipping it to the left-hand side. Give it a, we'll give it a second gear, shall we? <laughs> yes, this is a stage two mapped up. 335D, a vehicle that I feel like a lot of people want. A lot of people maybe watching this video will be intrigued to know what it's like to own and drive, and maybe even do things to the 335 chassis. This has got to be the best version in my opinion. So a sleeper wagon, I feel like is just the coolest. You would not know from the outside. Yes, it does scream stealth, slightly lowered, black wheels, tinted windows. I don't think that gives as much indication as to what is actually happening inside the cockpit when you put your foot down though. <laughs> Now this has an array of mods on it to take it to just shy of 400 horsepower and 800 newton meters of torque in a three series wagon chassis. That is biblical numbers in my opinion from something that is still retaining where it's saying I'm doing 36 MPG right now. But today we have a modified exhaust system. We have a stage two remap on the engine we have gearbox mapping as well because i feel like some bmws from this era i've owned this era of bmw in different chassis before the gearbox is not done but you will definitely feel a huge gain from remapping that gearbox there is a hidden intercooler at the front you won't see it but it is there and as i said it's lowered it's actually lowered on coilovers now i did notice when picking this car up it's slightly harsher than i was expecting on the daily commute you know going for a town but now i'm out on the open road it is rewarding me with just the most insane experience from a slightly smaller estate car it corners incredibly well this car i mean very very well it will surprise a lot of cars not just from the power but from the way this thing goes round a corner tip it into third just chuck it into a corner and <laughs> It has also got an LSD fitted to the rear of this vehicle. So not just one wheel spins, both of them spin. So when you're plowing through the gears, hoping for traction because that nigh on 800 Newton meters of torque is throwing itself to the rear wheels, both of them spin, not just one. It's not just grabbing both sides and giving it a wiggle. The whole rear end goes out, which is cool for a wagon. This is like the most unassuming daily driver. It is now retaining 40 mpg because we're cruising along slight bit of traffic but the second the open road is there it just throws you back in these ridiculously comfortable seats i mean i forgot how nice the seats are in some of the more premium three series this of course has full leather but it's not a top spec car we haven't got the iDrive center screen but you still do have digital climate control and a very good sound system as it's customary in a lot of these videos these days i actually need petrol in this car today so 
we're gonna go to the local petrol station, get us a little bevy, and see what the cup holder situation is like in 335D, shall we? I might have just snaked myself here because I don't know which side the fuel flap is on. We're about to find out. A few inches later. Right, Sainsbury's petrol station. You guys can't quite see it, but there is a really cool Land Cruiser just off camera. Uh, sorry about the monster. It's been a long day as usual, but I will just get out of the way because there's people behind us and I don't like clogging up the uh, small array of diesel pumps that are in this Sainsbury's. I'll show you the cup holder situation because it's pretty sick in here. Six and a half hours late. So the obligatory, does my monster that I got from uh, Sainsbury's fit in this car? Well, yes, these BMWs, this generation, I think have one of the best cup holders. Now I include this in a lot of my videos at the moment because I feel like it's something I would want to know in these cars. So you actually have an option of two on the passenger side that you can pull out. We will go for that one over there. There it is open and in fact, a monster fits absolutely perfect in there. Now you can't get drinks in the storage bins in the doors like you see in other videos that I've done in recent weeks. And it's quite nicely laid out in there. You do have center console. You've got a little gap to put bits in, in the middle, ashtray at the front. That's all good. Heated seats as well, shower heated seats. You actually on the driver's side have a movable armrest that goes over, but doesn't intrude on your handbrake, which is really nice. And as for storage in the back, there is storage bins both sides and you have a little ashtray just down here again some cars don't have vents in the back this one does have vents in the tunnel so your rear passengers will be happy that that's there and again it's a nice layout in here it's pretty similar to most bmws i've owned a fair few bmws in my time and it's very similar to this generation i feel like the generation after and i did say this one i had my m4 it's very very similar it's only really the brand new stuff that's had a major change in here you've got steering wheel buttons i will say as well the steering wheel is so thick in these m sport bmws which is in theory what this is and do you know what i'm not actually missing the center i drive screen i always used to look in this generation of bmw think oh i wish i had the screen there but i actually don't mind it in fact i think it's club sporty i'm gonna say that the screen isn't actually in front of me but then again that's down to personal preference enough of me blabbing about the interior of a bmw though let's go out for a drive and uh put our foot down shall we Should you buy one? That's the question. That's what I'm sort of basing today's video on is, should you go down the road of getting one of these? Well, if you're after something that's still got tons of room, I mean, it hasn't got as much room, of course, as a five series estate, but I feel like it has more room than a C-class estate. From the similar era, I would 100% say that this car is is the all-rounder it's the best of all worlds it has in fact as you can see behind me a dog cage bit in the boot because the owner takes his dog out in it it has tons of room behind me i'm in a very relaxed position in fact probably one of the nicest positions i've been in in something this powerful in a very long time it just feels very sedate in here it's actually come up to a set of traffic lights put this in it's just quiet, it's chill in here. Like, if you don't wanna use all of that crazy power and all of that crazy ability that this car has because of the coilovers, it is just the nicest place to be. You will, of course, spend a lot of money to get this car to where it is, though, so coilovers are expensive for the ones that are on here today. It has a set of wheels on it, and you're mappy. If you go in stage two, intercooler, mapping, gearbox mapping, you're into the thousands of pounds, but I do feel like this car is warranted for that sort of modification because from factory, yes, they are fantastic, Fantastic. But if you're willing to go out there and spend some money on your 335D, my God, do you care? Just the most insanely capable car on the other side. Now on the ownership side of this car, the diesel idea is great if you're poodling. It is pretty efficient. We've just done a little poodle away from uh, where we were shooting and we're up to 31 MPG. Now, I was speaking to the owner, he said, honestly, if you're on it, and I have seen from the fuel gauge and I've been monitoring the mileage we've been doing, it does drink when you're on it. That's obvious. It's a 400 horsepower, nigh on 400 horsepower diesel in line six. It's going to happen with, again, nigh on 800 newton meters. But please take that into consideration. It's not going to be fuel efficient if you put your foot down, which is fine, but Sometimes even I look at diesels and think, oh, a diesel, that's a great idea. Like, it would be really good on fuel and stuff, but 
diesel is more expensive at the moment and if you're putting your foot down you're like putting your foot down your stage one stage two and you know you're modifying your diesel yes you might get a little initial boost in your cruising mpg but you're going to want to put your foot down more so bear that in mind the owner has seen under 20 mpg in this thing when he's on it put that into consideration and for the 335 d's did a little bit of research as much as i could prior to coming and the thing that most of the owners actually talk about is the carbon buildup that these cars have whether you have various diesel related problems from that is down to servicing egrs blah 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 all the various diesel stuff but take that into consideration as well carbon buildup seems to be quite a big thing other than that though there is no cons to this car i think that is the most pro car i have ever driven i'd probably say the only slight con is price they've kept their money which is great if you're buying and great if you're selling but me looking into buying one for five grand it's never happening these are like eight ten 15 grand I've seen some of these up for. It's because it's the most rounded car you're probably gonna buy, at least in today's market in my books.